everyone and welcome back. I just wanted to give a quick fix for the parsing issue in the last video. I've already completed it, so instead of coding together, I'm just going to walk you through what I did and how I went about it. Before we get into all of this mess, what even is this, right? We will start from the beginning. So make sure you have your project open. You have all of these scripts open, dialog parser character and dialog one, and navigate to dialog parser, put this header at the top using system.linq. That is the only library we need to add for our fix to work. Now go to dialog onetext You'll notice if there are a few changes. We still have David as the name, comma, and this can be single or double quotes, so we can change it to double quotes if we want. And then comma, zero. So before I put the pose as blank, because I didn't know how we would, we, we would be implementing it, but it looks like if we go to character, we have this array of sprites that we call character poses. I want this default pose to be the zeroth sprite in character poses. So we're just going to remind ourselves to do this once we work on the character class, that this should be set to character poses zeroth indexed value. And in here, we are going to put zero in this slot to show that we want the default pose. And while we're at it, just change Rachel's to double quotes. You can do double or single. Our fix works for either one. So notice how we still have the comma within the quote, the quoted string. And our problem last time was that it was splitting at this comma instead of ignoring it and splitting at this comma. So let me show you how we got it working. Go to dialog parser and load dialog. You'll notice that mine is basically the same as what we had before. Instead of splitting line by a comma and using that simpler function, we have this split CSV line. Now CSV, this was originally from a forum question that I found. So I'm not taking credit for this code at all, which is fine. A CSV is a comma, it stands for comma separated value. Uh, you see them defining Excel spreadsheets a lot, lots of data analysis. It just makes things easier to read. So this is a function that uses regular expressions to parse CSV formatted lines. And this just happens, uh, our dialog just happens to be in a CSV form. All right, now this probably seems pretty crazy to most of you. Luckily, our <laughs> the kind answer commented everything for us, so we have an idea of what this does, but I'm thinking I'm going to make a tutorial specifically on regular expressions and what they are, both in code and in a more intuitive uh, computational theory sense. So look out for that video. I, I'm hoping to do that in the next week to explain what this all really is. I don't think that's the scope of this video right now. So I'm going to post this link in the description so that you can copy all of this into yours. Take a look at the comments and Google around, see what you can understand. But when you're debugging, I think you'll find that most programmers use Google as a first resource. It's okay if you didn't write a parser all by yourself because you don't want to reinvent the wheel every time you're trying to get a project to work. It's one thing if you're doing homework, it's another when you just want to get something running. I assure you, professionals in the field at any company, when they run into a problem, uh, they just go to Google, they see what's already been written, what can they use that's already been written, and what can they write to meet the problem halfway. So I, even though it seems silly or hand wavy or a cop out, I don't know what you want to call it, 
going to Google is a great first resource. If you just want to make your projects work, there's no reason to feel embarrassed about going on to Stack Overflow or the Unity forums. If you're looking primarily for a learning experience, then yeah, definitely write it from scratch. However, in this case, this function worked beautifully for our purposes. And so to test, to prove to you guys that everything's A-OK, -okay, we're going to set a breakpoint here. And we're just going to check and make sure the values in line values and line entry are what we expect them to. So this is a crude test. I'll show you guys how to do unit testing in Unity soon. But this generally works. Print statements and debuggers will work for this. Okay, so first, just to note, all of these warnings are okay for now. I think I mentioned earlier, you want to fix warnings at every possible opportunity. But right now, it's just yelling at us that we define values and we're not really using them. But that's just because we tried to plan out our code. Don't worry about any of this. We'll just ignore them. But don't do that in real life and try to fix them if it's your actual project. All right, let's set our debugger. Uh, or let's press play, then press play in Unity, and wait for it to load. It should break here. All right, so look at our local values. Let's look at line values. All right, notice it has the three split. It has David, hello, how are you, and zero. Notice that this comma was not split at the hello. So this is really nicely organized into the name, the content, and the pose. Now let's make sure line entry. Yep, so we have our content name and the pose is stored as an int. So this is awesome. We have everything set up to start feeding things into a text box and a dialogue box. And I'm looking forward to the next episode. I hope that going through the debugging process and running into issues and showing fixes is helpful. I hope that it isn't too annoying. If you'd rather that I just show the correct solution in the beginning, I can try to uh, do more planning with these. But I feel like I would prefer to give everyone a real world picture of what you run into in these projects rather than a manicured tutorial. I know I keep saying that, but that's just something I believe in. So let me know what you think. I love hearing all of your feedback and I'll see you guys next time.